reaper to catch up with the sower. And you know what people do? They base their future on what they're feeling instead of on what God's saying. I know that one thing God spoke to me when I come to this area. The church is based on emotion, not on spirit-led word. It's proven. We've had some emotion this morning, but it was excited by the Spirit of God and ignited by His Spirit to rise up knowing we don't have to stay where we're at. You see. Are you all understanding what I'm saying? I'm saying it in a loving way, I hope. We've all been emotional. We've all had emotional things come up. We've all had opportunities to get ourselves and shake ourselves and say, shut up, Richard, and sit down. Let's get back to the Word of God because God promised us a future. He wouldn't have called us here if He didn't have a, a future plan for us together. Our future is locked together. And when we separate, it's painful. We need to just get past. I mean, we've nearly bred emotion into the church. I'm bad at it because I like to shout and jump and jump over them altars and, and do stuff and, and, and uh, play. But the thing about it is, the bottom line is, I want you to know you're not just an ordinary Joe. You're a call of men and women of God to excel in the season to bring a nation back to its feet. And you can do it if you tap in to the provision of God. You see. But we're so conditioned to the bell system, which is the world system of doing things. Yeah, we're going to operate in our world, but we're not going to be part of that system. We're going to show them how to operate in a new system. But you've got to get enough people to believe it. When you walk out of here today, I don't want you going up to Charlie Clark's and uh, sitting around saying, well, that sounds good, what the pastor's talking about, but he's nuts. I'm telling you, 2010, we're winning the house back. And as a matter of fact, in 2010, we're winning this house back. Why? Because we're going to get seated and grounded in the Word of God in a way that brings spiritual life instead of emotional outburst. Amen? Okay. It also says in Acts 16... As an apostle, which I know I'm an apostle. I don't know how good I've done the deal, but I'm called and I'm trying. They, they get, they've they been given, uh, the in Acts 16, they've been given the right to make decrees of breakthrough. And they went through the cities. They delivered to them the decrees to keep. which were determined by the apostles and the elders at Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in faith. There's that word again, that people just fall all to pieces when you talk about faith. They were strengthened in faith, and they, their numbers increased daily. Nothing happens without faith. I told you last week, Moses standing with the rod in his arm, the Pharaoh's army chasing them down, finally let them go. Nothing happened until the man of God in faith raised his staff up over the sea, and the sea began to part, but it didn't part just because God said something. God said, Moses, you lift your staff up, the water apart. He could have stood there and said, oh, I don't believe that. That's too far out. I can see the water. I know it goes against all of the gravity flow. I know the water's running. It's a great big deal. It's a big sea. How could that work? How could I live? I know I've got the staff. I know the Word of God. I know I've heard the Word of God. And if you'd have just stood there, the armies of Pharaoh would have destroyed them. But an act of faith was generated by the Word of God. So he took his staff up. And by faith, he reached out. Bang! The water parted. 
Think about it. It's no different from David going down carrying. Some of y'all got here this morning think he's just going to bring some sandwiches to brother. He come down the hill. Daddy said, go down and feed your older brothers that's fighting the battle down there. Go down there and see what's going on to armies of Israel. He took the lunches. He went down. He was amazed at what he saw. There's all my big brothers. We're being humiliated. One man, one giant, defying the armies of the living God, and my brothers are sitting there letting him do it. And I see the church of the living God sitting on the round with some person spewing out vile things about the Christian way of living, about conservative living from a, from a high and lifted up place, and no one yet quite yet has had the guts or the faith to pick up the stone, put it in the sling, begin to sling the things around and let the Holy Spirit of the living God take out the enemy. I tell you what, if he hadn't had the faith to put the stone in the sling, Goliath would still be shouting over the armies of God. And then, of course, I come back at just such a blind Bartimaeus laying on the side of the road, couldn't see all of his friends saying, shut up, shut up. Don't you know the, the Savior, Jesus, is coming down the road. He said, oh, thou son of David. Oh, thou. He recognized his authority. And all of a sudden, they said, now shut up. Leave him alone. Don't you know he's busy? He said, oh, thou son of David. Heal me. He looked over there and said, what do you need? He said, I'm blind. Not anymore, you're not, because of an act of faith. He went against. He went against political right. He went against what was etiquette. He went against the things that was supposed to be happening. He wouldn't quit screaming and hollering, that's mine. My God's given me the right. Healing has come to me. Healing is walking in front of me. He is healing. I'm going to grab it. I'm not going to let it pass me by because I don't like to be blind. I don't want to sit around and not know what God's doing. I can hear the voice of God. God said, if you'll pray, if you'll believe me, I'll open your eyes up. I will reveal to you the coming season, and I'll let it be real to you. Maybe you're not of the right skin color this morning. Maybe uh, uh, you're uh, not of uh, the right race this morning. And all of a sudden, you thought about the woman with the issue of blood walking around. She is a Gentile, had no covenant rights. She had a disease that it was against the law for her to even be out on the streets. She is supposed to be locked up. And here she comes, and she's hollering and screaming. She knew Jesus. Healing was walking by. And she said, if I can only get to the hem of the garment, if I can only touch him, I'll be healed. I know I'll be healed. She didn't care what they said. They put her down. She had to crawl. She had to get through the crowd. The pious men sitting around, we're going to be up here next to the man of God. You, you get back there. You're a woman. Get at the back. You're a Gentile. You ain't even supposed to be out here. You have no covenant right. You get back. I'm going to healing. I'm going to the anointing. I'm going to the place that I know I'll find my future, and I'm going to grab it, and I'm not letting go. Till an act of faith was produced in a woman that was left out. And a woman that had no covenant rights until faith. Faith overrode the Jewish right. And it gave her the right of God to be healed. You see, do we have the tenacity? Do we have the passion? Do we have the desire to do what it's going to take to rise up? And make a difference in this season. I say yes. I say yes. I say it's yes. I declare and I decree over this congregation. That every wound is healed. So we can start fresh. I declare over this congregation. That you get revelation. During this week. 
like never before that God comes to you in the wee hours of the night begins to speak to you and give you insight and where to go. I declare and I make a decree as an apostle of God over you. If you will be open to God, your bodies will be healed and sickness will be taken from you. I decree that a peace will come upon you and your family like never before, never manifested in the last season. It'll start today. I believe and I decree because of the blessing of God and the provision of God that you're going to have a new job. 